Hey friends, Greg here. Riverdale is back for its third season and it looks like Archie and the gang are going to have their hands full. Again. While Archie is portrayed by K.J. Appa in Riverdale, the character has been around since the 1940s. And as you would suspect, Archie has done it all. He was a superhero, took on a zombie apocalypse, teamed up with the Punisher, and was wrecked by the Predator. As you dive back into the CW adaptation, we thought this would be the perfect opportunity to travel down memory lane with a brief history of the Archie comics and what led to the CW hit. But first, make sure to subscribe to Universe where we got you covered for comic deep dives, TV breakdowns, and movie reviews. Archie Comic Publications began in 1939 under the name MLJ Magazine, which, as you might have guessed, primarily published superhero comics, such as the forerunner to Captain America, The Shield. Fun fact, The Shield is one of the very first superheroes with a costume based upon United States patriotic colors, as the character would appear only a few months before Steve Rogers. MLJ Comics' name was derived from the initials of the partner's first names, Maurice Coyne, Louis Silverclight, and John L. Goldwater. According to Goldwater, he thought of Superman as an abnormal individual and concluded that the antithesis, a normal person, could be just as popular. And just like that, Archibald Archie Andrews was born. Inspired by the popular Andy Hardy movies starring Mickey Rooney, Archie Andrews would make his debut in the pages of Pep Comics number 22 in 1941. Archibald Chick Andrews, at the time, was also joined by Betty Cooper and Jughead Jones in the very same issue, and Veronica Lodge would join the group only a few months later. As most of you already know, Archie's main crush is Veronica Lodge, but he is also fond of Betty Cooper, forming one of the most iconic love triangles. Three's company two. The famous love triangle between Veronica, Archie, and Betty became the standard of the Archie story since the character was created. In fact, Archie is married to Betty in Archie Marries Betty, Life with Archie series, and married to Veronica in Archie Marries Veronica, Life with Archie series, from 2010. Forsyth, Pendleton, Jughead Jones III has been Archie's best friend from the very beginning. Jug is a chill, easygoing, and very unconventional high school student who just happens to love hamburgers. Man, Wimpy and Jughead would have been best friends. I I'll have a hamburger, for which I will gladly pay you Tuesday. Jughead's trademark beanie, also called a whoopee cap, was basically a modified fedora with pins. The hats were extremely popular with young adults during the Depression era and beyond. Also, the S featured on his shirt refers to a location called Skunk Hill in Massachusetts, which Bob Montana turned into Squirrel Hill for the comics. Montana's widow stated that the S standed for Squirrel Hill's Independent Tigers, and you couldn't abbreviate it any other way. Other notable Archie regulars are Archie's greatest frenemy, Reggie Mantle, as well as Dilton Doily, Moose Mason, Chuck Clayton, and Ethel Muggs. Of course, we can't forget about Josie and the Pussycats, as Josie was introduced in Archie's Pals and Gals number two. The Pussycats started their own Hanna-Barbera animated series, released a bubblegum pop album in 1970, and how can we forget about the 2001 film? Hello, I'm Eugene Levy, and yes, I'm an actor. Should you find yourself in the fictional town of Greendale, which is located somewhere near Riverdale, you'll meet Sabrina Spellman, aka Sabrina the Teenage Witch. Sabrina the Teenage Witch! We'll save her for another video. And fast forward to September 2010, Archie Comics premiered its first ever openly gay character, Kevin Keller in Veronica number 202. And history was made as Archie Comics ordered its first reprint ever in its 72 year history. Speaking of Kevin, in April 2014, Archie Comics announced that the version of Archie Andrews featured in the Life with Archie series would die in issue number 36. And sure enough, Archie was shot dead while saving the life of close friend and US Senator Keller in July 2014. During the golden age of comics, it didn't take long for Archie to become MLJ Magazine's headliner, which led to the company finally changing its name to Archie Comics Publications in 1946. At the height of its popularity, the Archie comic strip ran in 750 newspapers, while comic sales continued to sell millions of copies each year. Let's fast forward to April 4th, 2003, where a theater company in Atlanta was scheduled to debut a new play by Roberto Aguirre Sacasa. It was titled Archie's Weird Fantasy, and it would depict Archie Andrews coming out of the closet and moving to New York. Unsurprisingly, days before the play was scheduled to open, Archie Comics dropped a cease and desist order on Sacasa, threatening litigation if the comic characters' names were used in the play. Years later, following the deaths of co-CEOs Richard Goldwater in 2007 and Michael Silberkleit in 2008, Silberkleit's widow Nancy and Goldwater's half-brother Jonathan would take over the Archie brand. 
and it didn't take long for the two CEOs to wind up in court over the direction of the Archie comics, as the company sued Silverclight in July 2011, and Silverclight would hit back with a defamation lawsuit. Now, the corporate tug of war would get really messy, but the clash wouldn't cause any great financial impact on the Archie company, as Archie Comics became the first mainstream comic book publisher to make its entire line available digitally on the same day as the print release. During this time period, Archie Comics will relaunch the flagship series Archie with a new first issue in July 2015. Oh, and by the way, the company would have a new chief creative officer. That's right, no other than Roberto Aguero Sacasa. Surprise, motherfucker! Now before we get to KJ Appa and crew, we can't forget the numerous TV adaptations over the years, including the Saturday morning cartoon The Archie Show, which would later be replaced by an hour-long version, The Archie Comedy Hour, in 1969. The gang would have a real-life number one hit in 1969 with their song Sugar Sugar, written by Jeff Barry and Andy Kim. Sugar. Also, there was the Archie TV movie which aired in 1990. It was called Archie to Riverdale and Back Again, starring Christopher Rich as Archie 15 years after graduating from Riverdale High. Oh, and Jughead raps. Ah! Sugar! Ah, oh, honey, honey. You are my candy girl. And you got me rocking you. Break it down, come on! Development for a new live-action Archie adaptation would be on and off again for years. And from there, there was a small moment where Warner Brothers pitched a Riverdale film that had large sci-fi elements and would feature an older Archie portrayed by Louis C.K. What? Yep. Luckily, that never happened as Archie was moved to the small screen after producers only wanted major tentpole films. Now, Riverdale was originally developed at Fox in 2014, but the studio would drop the project and the CW would pick it up the very next year, and the pilot was officially ordered on January 29th, 2016. The series features an ensemble cast with K.J. Appa in the role of Archie Andrews, Lily Reinhardt as Betty Cooper, Camilla Mendez as Veronica Lodge, and Cole Sprouse as Jughead Jones. The cast also features Madeline Pesch as Cheryl Blossom, Ashley Murray as Josie McCoy, and Casey Cott as Kevin Keller. This self-aware, subversive take on Archie Comics would see the gang explore the darkness hidden behind Riverdale's seemingly perfect image. Each season would feature a slightly different genre. The first season would focus on the murder of Jason Blossom. Season 2 would have the gang take on the Black Hood serial killer for a horror twist, with mob and gangster elements peppered in. And Season 3 will have a true detective vibe, as we'll dive into the cultish dealings at the farm. And this season will feature the mysterious Yellow King, uh, I mean Gargoyle King. Without going into big spoilers for the new season, some new faces will arrive in Riverdale. Fans will finally meet Jughead's family, as his mom and little sister Jellybean will finally return to the small town in episodes 8 or 9. We'll also get a neat throwback episode where the kids will play their own parents as students at Riverdale High. Okay, that's it for me over here, everybody. Let me know what you think of Riverdale so far this season in the comment section down below. And until next time, keep it tuned to GameSpot Universe. Bye-bye.